Actual science aligns a lot more with common sense than you might realize. And this evening, I spoke with maybe the best voice of reason on COVID-19, that being Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for having me, Rob. Of course, yeah. So last Friday, you, along with a group of other Republican senators, sent a letter to Health and Human Services and the National Institutes of Health demanding documents from their handling of this pandemic, following the release, of course, uh, release of Fauci's emails. What is the very latest on that request? You know, they haven't honored the request yet, but our concern is that they're saying different things in private than they are saying in public. So it looks like in private, they had very an exchange of very urgent email saying, oh my goodness, look, it looks like they were doing gain of function research. It looks like they were taking viruses that are deadly to humans and making them even more deadly or more transmissible in the Wuhan lab. And they were alarmed in private, but in public they were saying nothing to see here. There's no chance that this came from the lab. So we want all of the information. To this day, Dr. Fauci still says that the NIH didn't fund gain of function research, but there's a host of scientists in this field of research who look at the applications for the NIH money that went to the Wuhan lab, and they say without question what they were doing there was gain of function research. So we should get to the bottom of this. I've asked the Democrat chairman of the Homeland Security and also of the uh, health committee, the health committee that I'm on, but we've asked them to have an investigation. We should want to know the origin of this, and we should want to try to prevent this from ever happening again. And we have to have a debate in our country. Do we want to fund research that enhances the ability of animal viruses to infect humans, or that experiments with viruses that could cause 15, even 50% mortality? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the SARS virus that they've been experimenting with gets out, it's a 15% mortality. That's 15 times greater than what we've just seen this last year with COVID. That's horrifying. Frankly, that is that is horrifying. Um, you know, we just, uh, you know, in, in the monologue, uh, we play a, a bite from uh, John Stewart uh, last night. He had a big, uh, big thing on Colbert's show where he talked about uh, the idea that this thing came from a lab. And frankly, he's, it, it seemed very obvious to him that this came from a lab. For the past year, those of us that believe that theory, for the most part, uh, were called conspiracy theorists. Now it, it appears that liberals are okay uh, maybe believing this theory. What do you think of that? You know, I think it's very dangerous for a free society if we have this group think and we have sort of a ministry of truth that only allows a certain debate to even be heard. And if you're opposed to a certain issue or have a different point of view, that you're sort of of the deplorable set. You're sort of of this group of people that's so unacceptable that you won't even be heard. This first started with the climate alarmism. And so now we have anchors of Sunday morning programs who say, I will not have anybody on who differs with the government consensus. So you have to realize one of the reasons there's a consensus in, in climate uh, alarmism is it's all funded by the government. Most of our research that we're talking about, this virus research is also funded by the government. So people are deathly afraid that Dr. Fauci could be vindictive or the NIH could be vindictive. Many of these people, you know, will not talk in public because they're afraid of having their funding cut off because they depend on the government funding. But there are some brave scientists who've been debating this for more than a decade who say that gain of function research, where we create these super viruses in the vaccine, mm -hmm. super viruses in the lab, is uh, not worth the risk. Now, Dr. Fauci's clearly on record saying that even if a pandemic were to occur, he said this in 2012, before this pandemic, he said even if a pandemic would, were to occur, the research is worth it. I absolutely disagree. And the wow. interesting thing about the development of the vaccine that we have now is that the vaccine that we've developed, I think, can be developed without gain-of-function research because we can very quickly sequence the RNA from a virus or the DNA from a virus. We can sequence that within days, and the mRNA vaccine that they created can be created within weeks. So I think we're actually in a good position where we can make the strong argument that we don't need to be creating really, really pathogenic, dangerous, plague-like viruses in the lab and then hoping they don't get out. That's, I think, a fool's, a fool's errand. 
I, I couldn't agree more on that. You know, there, there are House Republicans uh, that are calling to fire Dr. Fauci. Here's Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar today. A few weeks ago at a Senate hearing, Fauci testified under oath that no taxpayer funds were used to fund the research in Wuhan. He then recently reversed himself and testified at a House hearing that, in fact, the National Institute of Health had earmarked $600,000 for the Wuhan lab to study the possibility that the bat coronavirus could be transmitted to humans. Can you say perjury? So obviously, Democrats have control of the House. But what do you suspect happens with Dr. Fauci in the future after all this? I think things have changed quite a bit. You know, he had sort of Teflon before. Nobody could touch him. Nobody questioned him. But now in the last couple of weeks, as it's come out that he was really trying to suppress the story of gain of function, that he's not been forthcoming on whether or not the Wuhan lab was doing gain of function. It's not been forthcoming about the NIH funding of this. I think there is a tarnish beginning to attach to his name and to his reputation. But you know what? There are still some big issues. He continues to discount the idea of natural immunity. So 100 million people in our country have gotten the disease naturally. That natural immunity added up with the vaccination allows us to be at herd immunity now and the case is dwindling to nothing. And yet Dr. Fauci insists we aren't anywhere close and that we must vaccinate all the children. They don't want you to think at all about are there any side effects from the vaccine that children might get. Right. He also doesn't want you to do the common sense thing is why don't you test your children first to see if they have antibodies. It's one size fits all. They're going to prevent your kids from going to school if they don't get it. And yet there's no good science to back this. If sure. you've already had the infection, all of the science points towards immunity and points towards that you probably don't need a vaccine. And for children, they're more likely to be struck by lightning than to die from COVID. It is not a disease that kills children. Very, very rarely does it uh, harm children. And parents ought to be able to make these decisions. Right. But because Dr. Fauci is ignoring natural immunity that you get when you get the disease, he still says we have to press on. We're going to have to vaccinate more and more and more. And yet, if you look at the daily numbers, uh, I looked earlier today, there's uh, less than 2,000 or less than 3,000 people have a positive test today. Uh, the deaths were a little over 100. So we really are getting beyond the worst of this. We're coming out of it. But Dr. Fauci hasn't shown good judgment. I think it's time for him to go. Yeah, well said. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, sir, thank you so much for the time. Thank you.